Cafe Cafe is Kansas City's first Vietnamese coffee shop. So it is essentially a coffee shop on wheels. And we specialize in amplifying the Asian narrative by including all flavor profiles of Vietnamese coffee. And all of our coffee beans are from Vietnam. So before the pandemic, I spent 10 years in New York um, being an actor. I studied musical theater in college and I did a lot of touring productions of various uh, Broadway shows. And most recently, right before the pandemic, I was on the Broadway revival tour of Miss Saigon. While I was on the road with Miss Saigon, I had taken a trip to Vietnam during one of our breaks and it really inspired me to be a little bit more involved in my community and in my culture. So I'm a first generation Vietnamese American. I'm the first one in my family to be born here. So when I took the trip to Vietnam, it really resonated with me that there were a lot of things about my culture and a lot of things about myself that felt untapped. And while I was on the road, I kept thinking, I wanna do something for my community. I wanna do something that is more than a line on a resume, essentially. And I got the idea of starting a coffee shop because the coffee culture in Vietnam is just like incredible. It's super dope, but I didn't plan on doing it this soon. The pandemic hit and we were out of a job. So our show stopped completely. We were out of work and then our show got canceled like for real. So I didn't have a job to go back to and at the time I was living out of a suitcase for like almost 18 months. Miss Saigon had come to Kansas City for two weeks. And while we were here, we were just enamored by the city. And I thought, wow, this would be really cool to start my coffee shop here, you know? So because of the pandemic, I didn't have anywhere to go. So we came here and I said, you know what? I'm gonna jump and let's just do it. It is a mobile coffee shop right now because during the pandemic, I wasn't able to receive a loan or any funding because everything was being shut down so much. I took every penny that I had from savings, which was like 10 grand. And then I also did a Kickstarter where I asked the community of Kansas City to essentially help me. And that's all. I started with that and I just did everything myself. I still do a lot myself, like 95% of it myself, including like social media, photos, all the pop-ups, all of the labor, up until last month was all me. We started off, you know, sales were like really low because I was just doing a small lemonade stand. Uh, you know, essentially I was just setting up a table, having some Vietnamese lemonade and Vietnamese coffee at a table and like serving it that way just to get my name out there. When I first saw my balance sheet and I realizing we were really making a lot of money, it was almost a shock because I'm not used to big figures like that. And the, the speed of which we got there, I mean, I'm just talking like within a month we doubled and then in a month we tripled. So that was crazy to be like, oh my God, uh, not only is this becoming popular on social media, but on paper and like the numbers, it was actually becoming lucrative. You know, I could actually make a living. I could pay my employees, you know. It was a shock and it was also legit. At first, building our business was difficult financially because of the pandemic. Then it became difficult because we were so loud and we were so outspoken about being Asian and we felt like the, the temperature of the country was just really unbearable because of all of the attacks. But what we found was that because we continued to be strong in our opinions and we continue to fight for you know, the Asian community in town, we found that the community itself was so much more supportive than we could have ever imagine. We threw a Stop Asian Hate vigil for Kansas City, where over 500 people showed up and we taught everyone how to light incense. So we did a, an incense tribute instead of a candlelit vigil. Um, and that was just so magical and so amazing because we saw Kansas City come out. They were like, yeah, we, 
we want to be there for you. We want to show you that you're safe here and that we don't want anyone to attack you either. We felt targeted a few times and so we've sh like closed down our shop to give ourselves just like some space to feel safe. But as a result of our vigil, Kansas City um, and the mayor of Kansas City declared May to officially be AAPI Heritage Month in the city of Kansas City. And we, as a coffee shop, were able to speak with the mayor that day. We got like an official decree. It was awesome. And so I feel like there's been good and bad with this shop, but overall it's just been better for us. And we've helped the community recognize that, hey, there is a community here and it deserves to have a platform as well. Being an Asian woman and having a brand and a company where being Asian is at the forefront of our brand and of our company, that's been so rewarding because I've gotten hundreds of DMs and messages and emails from other Asian people thanking me for doing this. And I, I knew that there needed to be more things and more businesses that made being Asian super cool. And I've tried really hard to build this brand to make other Asian kids out there be like, that's cool and I feel cool and I feel seen and I feel heard. So that's probably been like the most rewarding because we've created the space for that reason. We wanted to amplify the narrative within the Midwest where Asians aren't as heard or recognized and feel more invisible in these areas of the country. And being able to kind of look at my shop and be like, I did that, like that's, that's really cool.